All right. Uh, strong Miss Ellis, you're standing. Yes, Shazam, Your Honor. There is one quick matter I'd like to address before the jury comes back in and testimony resumes. Yes, and ma'am. that is that I am holding in my hand what I have just received and has been told is a sealed envelope containing workers' compensation records. Oh. And so I would ask to approach to present these to the court and ask the court for a <coughs> court order for these. All right. What I'll do then is I'll take those home. I didn't really want to see our state in this North Carolina this weekend and exploring North Carolina on public television tonight. No, I'm, I'm just. Uh, it's not very fair. I don't kind know. Of them. I mean, I'll find out. I'll take a look. If you designated <laughs> me, for example, I'd be able to look at them, but I suspect there'd be an objection. I'm going to mark those as um, State v. Riley. Workers comp papers. Received in open court and closed envelope. for the defense at this time. Thank you. We're all clear on what you know, that the, the, the final objection was sustained. We're all clear on that, everybody. And make a profit. All right. Sheriff, if you want to put back in, please. I'm, in your job, do you know who the alleged victim is on the paperwork? Yes, we do. Okay. And say some criminal defense lawyer whose initials are AC called you up and said, hey, can you put my client's name as the victim? What would you do? i tell you now. Because you listen to Mr. McMaster and what he tells you to put on there, right? Yeah, if we don't have any other identification, we usually will take the information provided to us by the detectives or the officer. But you didn't, you weren't there, so you don't, that, that's why we have a jury, right? I was not there when it was clocked at clock. And getting back to gunshot residue um, testing, where does that get sent? Typically it's sent to the North Carolina State Crime Lab. And I believe you said that form that we were talking about gets sent along with the actual materials, the test. The, yes, to it's tested. placed in the envelope and sent with the materials. Thank you very much. You're welcome. That would be my questions for this witness at this particular moment. 
Thank you, uh, Mr. Charles. Ms. Uh, Ellis, any additional questions of the, um, the witness and such? Yes, sir. Ms. Hutchins, um, you're familiar with the uh, GSR testing and what they're looking for? Uh, a little familiar, yes. And what is it that they're looking for in those tests? Again, they're typically looking for the components of gunshot residue, which would be typically barium, antimony, and lead. And uh, as a uh, as a supervisor in your lab, um, if there are you familiar with um, what would happen if two people are very close to a weapon that is discharged? Yes. And what would happen if two people are very close to a weapon that is fired? The gunshot residue could end up on the other person's skin or clothing. Based on that, if two weapon are very or two people are very close to a weapon, um, would the GSR test be able to tell you who fired a weapon? No, it cannot. Can the GSR ever tell you who fired a weapon? No, it cannot. What can it tell you, if anything? It can just tell you those chemical components were on the person's skin or clothing. Which would be, um, what would that mean? It means they were in the proximity of those chemicals. Either they were holding a gun that had been fired, they were in close proximity, they fired a gun, possibly they touched something that had those chemicals on it. Uh, it can mean a variety of things. So if you knew that um, two people were in close proximity, um, with that weapon, um, <coughs> would it be valuable uh, for you? Uh, would those testing be valuable for you to evaluate who fired the weapon? Uh, that would probably be more for an investigative answer, but I would say probably not. It just means that they were both close in close proximity. Thank you. And um, as the uh, lab supervisor, um, DNA testing and the like, um, is it, do you generally send that off if you know who the suspect is? And no, we don't. Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Charles, you need um, recalls. Yes, very briefly. In this case, um, DNA um, samples were sent off to the lab, weren't they? I don't know if they were or not. I know, I know DNA swabs were collected from various items. I don't know if they were sent. And who would know that? The lead investigator typically makes the request. And that would be Ms. Uh, Corporal McMaster? If he was lead on the case, then he would have made the request. And I thought I heard you say you took pictures of Mr. Riley at headquarters? Yes, I did. Did you take pictures of his hands? I did not take specific pictures of both hands. I took photos of his left hand because he did have injuries on it. But both hands were in some of the overall photos I took of him. What hands were In some of the overall photos I took of him. And if he had, um, he didn't have burn marks on his hands, did he? Not that I recall, no. Okay. And you've had other cases that involved a discharge of a firearm where someone had their hand up on the muzzle and received burn marks. No, I, no, I have not. Thank you very much. That would be my questions at this particular time. Any other questions, anyone? Nothing for the state, for this witness, Your Honor. Thank you. You may step down.
Michael Muse. How are you employed? I'm a police officer with the Durham Police Department. Can I? How long have you held that position? Uh, six years. And during those six years, have you been an officer with the K-9 unit that entire time? That's the time I've been with the K-9 unit. I've been with the police department nine and a half years. And what other positions have you held in the police department? I was a patrol officer. <coughs> I was assigned to the K-9 unit. And were you working on duty on December 18th of 2012? I was. And what would have been your duties on that day? The K-9 unit's a patrol support unit. We respond to all uh, in-progress calls for service, break-ins, um, robberies, gunshot wounds, things of that nature, Any, anywhere the dog might be needed. And what type of situation in general is it that we would need at all? Anywhere something needs to be located. The dogs are locating tools. So if, if discarded evidence, track down a robber, then multiple reasons. And did you... Um, come to respond to Newcastle Road on December 18th? Uh, yes, I did. Tell the court how it is that you came to go to that location. Um, after we left uh, the apartments on, I believe it was Wildwood, I was requested to do an article search uh, along the wooded area um, between 85 and the, I believe it's the Forest Point Apartments, or the apartments on Forest Road. And you said you were requested to do what type of search? An article search. Okay. And did you do that article search at Forest or Newcastle? I did. On that day, the day of the incident, I did an article search on Forest Road. And the next day, I did an article search on um, off of Wildwood as well as one off of Stadium Drive. So let me take you back to December 18th. You did a an article search on Forest Road. Yes, ma'am. What articles were you looking for? We were looking for the items that have been stolen from Officer Stewart, his weapon. Objection, motion to strike. Sustained. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I know that you're here to disregard that last answer. Could you tell the court what items you were looking for without telling the court how it is that they came to need to be located? We were looking for items that could be of evidentiary, evidentiary value to the case. Like, um, could you name those items? Uh, the police badge, handcuffs, and a firearm. And at the time that you were um, performing this article search, did you know who these items belonged to or who they were issued to? I did not. Who was that? Officer Stewart. And where did you start that search? Um, I believe I started back near where Officer Stewart's uh, SUV was and work the wood line along 85, um, all the way down to the, uh, even past the, the dumpsters, I believe there's some sort of retaining wall all the way at the end of the apartments. If you had a map of the area, I could show you, I could point it out. I don't know if you have that available. I believe that we do. Your Honor, may I approach the witness? Yes.
Yes, sir. Thank you. Officer Muse, I am approaching you with what has been marked as State's Exhibit 24 for identification. Um, could you take a look at that document and tell the court what it is? Uh, it appears to be an overhead view of the Forest Road, um, Forest Road, which leads into that apartment complex. And is this a map that would aid you in illustrating your testimony today? Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, the state moves to admit State's Exhibit 24 into evidence for illustrative purposes. No objection from the defense. Thank you. State's Exhibit number 24 is admitted for illustrative purposes. And Your Honor, at this time, the state moves to publish State's Exhibit 24 to the court. That's allowed. Taking this marker, or, or that one, uh, could you please indicate on this map the area that you just described? So I believe Officer Stewart's car was somewhere here, where it said Forest Road, I'm sorry. Trying to block it. This wooded area from this house all the way down along the uh, along I-85 out to 85 came down to this end where, like I said, I believe it's some sort of retaining wall. Worked that area mostly, and then even though um, there was no indication that the weapon uh, or badge or whatever had been thrown elsewhere, I just I worked the entire complex um, to see if we located any evidence, and we found nothing. And if you could go ahead and mark those areas with that marker, please, sir. Do you want me to draw in some big areas, the whole thing? Yes. Do you want to just like shade it in? Or just draw on? Whatever is easier for you, sir. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Basically made a big circle. And you indicated that it was a weed. Um, who else was with you? My canine partner, Burns. And what type of dog is Prince? He's a Belgian Malinois. A Belgian? Malinois, M-A-L-I-N-O-I-S. Thank you, sir. It was a decent amount of time, over an hour. And what if anything was located during that search? We don't do anything now. And did you and Prince embark upon any other searches in relation to this case? We did not. And where did those searches occur? Uh, like I said, one off of Wildwood Road near an apartment where the suspect vehicle was initially located on the 18th, as well as another search on Stadium Drive from Broad Street to Carver Street. Those two searches were done collectively as a unit the following day. Both of those were done the following day? Yes, ma'am. Now, the first search you mentioned was on Wildwood Road? I don't remember which one came first, ma'am, but I believe it was. And what articles were you searching for on December 19th in that area? Uh, when we went to Wildwood Road, we were requested as a result of a badge and a pair of handcuffs being found in the trash of, uh, like, the pool building or a country house for the, for the apartment complex at Wildwood Road. So at that point, our, our main goal was to locate the firearm. And could you tell the court about the search area for that search? It was a very large search area. Again, if you have a photo, 
an aerial photo would be easy to describe? You're on a map, right? Yes. Officer Mews, I'm approaching you with what has been marked as State's Exhibit 25 for identification purposes. Could you identify that for the court? Yes, ma'am. It appears to be an overhead view of uh, the Wildwood Road um, and Newcastle Road apartment complex area. Thank you, sir. Would this map help illustrate your testimony? It would, ma'am. Your Honor, I move to have State's Exhibit 25 admitted into evidence for illustrative purposes. No objection from defense. Thank you. State's Exhibit number 25 is admitted for illustrative purposes. And Your Honor, the state moves to publish to the jury at this time. Allow. And Officer News, I'm going to ask you to do as we did before and take a sharpie. And if you could indicate on this map uh, via that sharpie marker the area that was searched okay, so on December 19th. Yes, ma'am. So for the purposes of this, there were multiple handlers and multiple dogs involved. Um, I can tell you the general area in which everyone searched, and I can also point out exactly where I searched. You can do both, please. Okay, so I, I believe this was the building right here where the suspect vehicle was found in this cul-de-sac. And then we searched, so, and then the uh, bed and handcuffs were found somewhere over here, I believe. Yeah. So we searched from the back of this building, hit the wood line all the way back here, and this we actually went even further beyond this, I believe, because um, there's a cut that leads out to uh, Horton Road that we also searched. But we basically searched from this area down, and this is a very densely, heavily wooded area, um, and there's actually a fence that runs back in here that. Um, officers worked on the inside of that as well, probably up to about this point. I don't think they went any further uh, east than that. And we just, we basically divided it up into a grid and we all searched a quadrant. I mainly focused on this run, uh, which is, you know, it's, just, it's a clear path behind the building between the gate and the back of the building. And how long did that particular search last? Hours, we were out there a long time. If you could go ahead and sign or initial this map on one of the borders. Thank you so much. What if anything is found during that search? We didn't find anything. You also conducted an additional search in relation to this case on December 19th. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And where did that search occur? Along um, Stadium Drive from Broad Street to uh, Carver Street. Would a map help illustrate um, your testimony with respect to that search? It would, ma'am. Permission to reapproach the witness, Your Honor? Yes, ma'am. you to go ahead and initial states exhibit 24. Thank you, sir. And now I'm showing you what has been marked as states exhibit number 26. Could you please take a look at that and identify it for the court? 
It's an overview. I'm just trying to get my bearings of where we are on the map. Downstream. Here it is. Okay. Yes, I found it. It's an overhead view of, it's a rather pulled out view of the area we searched um, from broad to park. And would this map help illustrate your testimony with respect to that additional search on December 19th? Yes, it would, ma'am. Your Honor, the state moves to admit State's Exhibit 26 into evidence for illustrative purposes and to publish to the jury. No objection. Thank you. State's Exhibit 26 is admitted for illustrative purposes. The request to publish it is allowed. Thank you, Your Honor. Awesome news if you could again um, put that on the Elmo and indicate with the marker of the area of search. Okay, so this yellow line right here is Broad Street. And this yellow line is Harvest Street. We searched the uh, heavily wooded areas on either side between those two. Um, again, multiple dog teams um, broke it up into separate quadrants and searched it um, until we, we felt that we had gone through the entire area efficiently. Could you describe that area for the um, it's, it's mostly um, brush and trees on either side. There is there's a little road uh, probably about 100 yards up from uh, Broad Street on the right-hand side, I believe the gravel road. But for the most part, it's, I believe it's all wooded area with the exception of it looks like there's a building here. And I think there's a gravel driveway that goes down to some sort of maybe a, a power substation. I, I don't recall. How long did that search last? Probably close to an hour, hour and a half. Again, it's a very large area to search. If you could go ahead and initial state's exhibit 26 as the document that you want. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. <coughs> and Officer Hughes, what if anything was found on that search? We didn't find anything there. And again, you said we, so I take it you were not the only officer searching? Correct. Do you have or do you recall about how many officers participated in that search? I believe there are at least five canine teams out there, including myself. And why did you search this area? I believe I received a call from Sergeant Green, uh, and they had located a discarded cell phone in the roadway. Um, they asked me to come over there, thinking possibly the weapon had also been discarded in that area. Thank you so much. Those are all my questions. Your Honor, permission to uh, approach the clerk with these exhibits? Yes, ma'am. Questions of uh, Officer Mews, Mr. Jones. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Officer Mews. I have no questions for you. Thank you. You may sit. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Mayor, at this time, the state would call Eddie Wright to the stand. Thank you.
You used to always swear that the testimony you should now give the court in the case now being heard should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God. I do. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Wright. Good morning. It's actually afternoon. Good afternoon, actually. Yeah. Feels like morning since it's uh, dark outside. Um, sir, could you please state your name and occupation for the court? My name is Edward Wright. I was a, uh, I'm a uh, landscaper now. I was a maintenance supervisor at Foxfire. Okay. And uh, could you tell uh, the jury what Foxfire is? Foxfire is an apartment community uh, over on Horton and Stadium Drive. And sir, um, how long did you work there as a maintenance person for that apartment complex? Uh, up until about three months ago, about 21 years. And uh, sir, did you have the occasion to contact the police department on uh, 12, 18, or 19, 2012? I did. And can you tell us why you contacted the police department on December 19, 2012? Okay, on a routine uh, maintenance of a bathroom on a pool area, I found uh, a set of handcuffs, a badge, a bag, a backpack, and clothing in the, in the uh, restroom area. And are you familiar with that uh, complex? Very familiar with that complex. And uh, would you be able to identify a map of that complex? I would. Sir, so I'm going to approach which Ben marked as State's Exhibit Number 32. State's exhibit number 32. I'm also going to pick these up. And sir, do you recognize that map? Recognize the light. Yes, ma'am. And sir, how do you recognize that map? Well, I can recognize the road that it's on and also the uh, buildings. And, sir, is that an accurate um, depiction of uh, that area? Yes, ma'am. And, sir, can this map help you illustrate your testimony to the jury today? I believe it can. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. At this time, I'd like to introduce State's Exhibit Number 32 into evidence for illustrative purposes. No objection. Thank you. State's Exhibit Number 32 is admitted for illustrative purposes. Your Honor, permission to have uh, the witness uh, publish that exhibit by overhead. That's the lamb. Permission to approach? Yes. Sir, I believe that there's a marker up there, but I'm going to help you uh, with our fancy stuff here. And I'm going to introduce you to Mr. Elmo. And, sir, if we can, if you can identify um, this area. Um, four, and you can just kind of point down here and uh, look at this map and it'll show up on uh, the overhead. Okay. Yeah, and absolutely. And if you want to use this pen to write on the map, if you'll just A, um, put your initials on it, and then uh, B, follow with me as I uh, go through the map. Okay, I have a question. Yes, sir? I don't know what that red mark is. Yes, sir. Okay. I okay. know where my buildings are, the buildings of the property. Okay. Okay. Um, with uh, disregarding the red marks, sir, could you um, mark 
On here, are you able to see the building where you've located the items you called the police for? That would be on Wildwood Road. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And can you put an X on the building where you found that those items? That would be right here. Thank you. And sir, if you put cool. in the margin, just uh, print your name and today's date. I'm sorry, whereabouts? Just on the margin in the white part. Down at the bottom? Yeah, at the bottom, top. photos? Yes, ma'am. And did you take these photos? No, ma'am. Uh, do those photos accurately depict what you saw on December 19th, 2012? Okay. This, um, when I approached the bathroom... Okay, sir. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, sorry. I'm just going to kind of focus you a little bit here. Um, do those photos accurately um, depict what you saw when you were in that bathroom? Yes, ma'am. And sir, can they help you uh, illustrate your testimony to the jury here today? I believe that these are accurate to what I found. I'm not sure what your question is to me. <laughs> no problem, sir. My, my questions are merely foundational, and I'm just asking this if, if those photos can help you tell the jury um, and explain to them your testimony. Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, at this time I'd like to introduce State's Exhibits number 27, 28, 29, 30, and 31 into evidence as illustrative. No objection. Thank you. State's Exhibits 27, 28, 29, 30, and 31 are admitted for illustrative purposes. Thank you. Um, sir, if you could um, please put our approach, Commissioner Kircher. Yes, ma'am. Sir, I'm going to show you what's been marked the state's exhibit number 29. And if you could uh, explain what we're looking at here in this photo. That is the entrance to the bathroom, of the back of the building, the okay. pool bathroom. And can you tell me um, basically what your duties were that day and how uh, you came across the bathroom? My duties are to clean the bathroom every morning, every day for the pool area, for the uh, people to use it, obviously, for the pools. And uh, who has access to this area? That, that When the pools are open, everybody has access to them. Anybody that wants to use the pools, anybody on the property can go in there because they're unlocked. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Pratchard? Yes, ma'am. Now I'm going to show you the next picture and put that on the Elmo unit. That would be item number 28. Sir, can you tell us what we're looking at here and explain to the jury? Okay, when I walked in, uh, actually, well, you can see them on the next one. This is the garbage can that's in there, and then I also saw a, back, saw a backpack in there. That's inside the bathroom. Now, why did... Why was this unusual to you? What, if anything, about it was unusual? Well, first of all, the day before that, okay, there was a big, um, they had a lot of police officers SWAT on our property. They were um, 
at 1336 D2 building. They would let nobody get close to that place. Um, it was all roped off and everything. That was the day before. So the next day when I saw this stuff in the bathroom, I called 911 because as, as they'll see in the next picture, I saw a pair of handcuffs in there that were not something the kids would be playing with or anything of that nature. It was regular police handcuffs. And with everything that was going on the day before, that's why I called 911. Thank you. Commissioner Kershaw? Yes, ma'am. Now, um, can you describe for me what you saw when you uh, looked into the uh, trash can? You're putting the picture up here. This is the handcuffs that I saw. Okay. I did not touch them. I didn't touch anything. Okay. And uh, were you able to look in there and find anything further? I, I didn't personally look in, in there and touch it because I called 911, let them handle it. Um, they even took my fingerprints and everything. So I didn't touch nothing. Okay, I'm going to show you uh, what's been marked as state's exhibit number 30. And can you tell us what we're looking at in here? Yes, ma'am. Again, the handcuffs were in there on top of uh, the waist. Uh, it looks like toilet paper roll. But that was, this is all from the day before, so. And uh, did you know what happened uh, the day before? Yes, I was familiar with the, the ruckus that went on with the police officers. I'm not object to this. Sustain. Thank you. Next question. Thanks. Um, what did you do next after you found these? I called 911. And what if anything happened after that? The police officers came, two police officers came, they called the detectives, detectives came to the property, and then all of a sudden there was like eight people, there were eight officers of different varieties. And when you say different varieties, um, how do you tell them apart? <laughs> well, some had, off, I mean, some had the uniforms on, which is the police department. Some were detectives with plain clothes on them, and they introduced themselves as detectives and they introduced themselves as police officers. And uh, were you there when the officer or when the officer started processing that scene? Yes. And were you there when they um, were able to take the items out of the, retrieve the items out of the garbage? Yes, they were, they were removed while I was there. And were you able to identify the other item that was located in the, in the garbage can? Okay, I don't know that it was actually inside the, the, the uh, I can't, this I can't remember if it was inside that uh, garbage container or if it was in the backpack, but I believe it was in the garbage can. And that's the picture that's not being shown yet okay. of the badge. And you saw that? Yes, I saw the badge there. Okay, and does that picture, picture accurately depict what you saw? Yes, ma'am. Information of Yes. Sir, can you please tell us what we're looking at in that photo? That would be uh, a police badge. That was underneath, un when they brought it out, I didn't actually see it at first until they brought it out of the, of the trash can. And Uh, the questions that I have for Mr. Wright. Thank you, Mr. Wright, for just your name see you there. Mr. Jones, questions of Mr. Wright. Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon, Mr. Wright. Good afternoon. You might have said it, and I just missed it, but this was on December 19th that you um, saw those items, is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. And when was the last time that you had been in that bathroom? prior to that day? Every day it's checked. Okay. What, do you know what time the prior I, day? I usually try to do it in the mornings. 
do you keep a log book or was there, it wasn't that kind of? No, it's not that kind of uh, an issue that we have to log it. But you recall checking it the prior, prior day sometime in the morning? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. That would be all the questions I have from Mr. Wright at this time. Any other questions, Ms. Ellis? Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Um, Mr. Charm stated that there was a log, um, or if there was a log, uh, do you know if there was any other surveillance on the, on the uh, campus? No, not. Well, we have cameras, but nothing that would cover any of that area. Thank you, Mr. Charms. Any additional questions? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Wright, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Your Honor, at this time I'd ask that Mr. Wright be released from his subpoena. To the extent he can hear it, you're released. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank ride up to the Eno River. And uh, how, which way did you go or what, what pathway did you take? Uh, the route to go up there from downtown would take you up the Ellerby Creek Trail uh, through Northgate Park then along Stadium Drive before you cut through Whippoorwill Park and then on to uh, I believe it's Horton Road and then you can cut through I don't know the name of the neighborhood up there, but that puts you out onto Roxborough, right near the entrance to the West Point on the Eno Park. That puts you out onto Roxborough. Roxborough Road. Okay. And then say the rest of the Oh, near the entrance to the West Point on the Eno Park. And uh, did any did you note anything unusual on your bike ride uh, that day? No, but I did find a cell phone. And when you say you found a cell phone, um, approximately what time did you find this phone? Mm, I would say it was probably around lunchtime, maybe noon, one o'clock. And uh, you stated that you found a cell phone. Could you describe exactly what you found at that time? Sure, so as I was heading out to the Eno, I was riding up the hill on Stadium Drive and I noticed the back case of a cell phone. And you know, when you're riding, you find debris like that all the time. So I kept riding. I went to the Eno, I hung out at the river for a little bit, and then as I came down Stadium Drive on my return trip, I saw the front half of the cell phone laying on the other side of the road. So that is when, uh, I think at that point, I, I went across the street, I grabbed the back half, I picked up the front half of the, the front half was intact and I put them together. Now you stated that you found um, one 
on one side of the road and the other on the other side of the road. Um, can you explain that a little bit further? Can you tell me um, where uh, in relation to the curbs that they were found? Excuse me, in relation to the curbs? The curbs of the road? Yeah, I mean, you know, each of these uh, pieces was kind of between, you know, where I was riding my bicycle and the curb, so along the, uh, the, the gutter there, so to speak. Um, like I said, as I was riding northward on Stadium is when I found the back half, and then as I was returning home, you know, and I wasn't going to stop for just a piece of plastic, but when I was returning home, I found the front half of the smartphone, so that, that was uh, enough to make me stop and pick it up. Now, did you travel in the same lane both uh, trips, both out and back? No, no, no. Of course, on the, on the way north, I was on the right side of the road. On the way south, I was on the right side then, just as a motorist would do. So, no. Separate sides of the road. And how far apart would you say that these two pieces were? Oh, I mean, they were pretty much just across each other on the road, so whatever the width of a roadway is there at Stadium Drive. Now you stated that you found the two pieces and you put them back together. What, if anything, did you do next with the phone? Um, I think at that point, I think I took it back to the bike shop and I charged it up there and, t and found that it was still working and functional. And what, if anything, did you do after you found that it was uh, working and functional? Um, I mean, that's pretty much where I stopped interacting with it because I mean at that point I was seeing that it was receiving messages um, and yeah I just I don't know I didn't have any way to figure out who the owner was or anything so were you able to view those messages yeah I saw the messages and they were saying something about some sort of accident and that kind of stuff stuff of that nature and so uh, I didn't know what had happened I thought maybe there was a car wreck or something like that And did you come into contact with the police in reference to this phone at any time? Yeah, so, you know, after, I think it was the next day, I believe, that, um, that I was there at work in the shop and some, I mean, to me, I didn't know what kind of official people they were, but there were some sort of official looking people came in and they were, you know, a little bit agitated and they were searching around, looking kind of around the building and just kind of being strange and, and they asked me what was behind one wall of the building and I said you know there's nothing there it's still under development and then behind another wall and I was like that's the cooler for the pizza place next door and they said what's up upstairs and I said oh an apartment and um and like then they left and as they were gone the phone rang again and so I'm starting to connect the dots here and then um they come back in and as they come back in the phone is ringing and one of the uh, I, you know officers, I think, they uh, he was asking me where I found it or, or how to how to get it. He didn't know I found it, but he said, "How did you get this phone or whatever?" And what if anything did you say? I told him I found it on a bicycle ride. And what if anything happened next? Uh, I don't know. I mean, as I recall, they they just confiscated the phone and took down my information and said that they would get in touch with me further um, and I believe it was like maybe the next day or two days maybe even that same day some two more people came to speak with me about it and now um, have you had a chance to um, listen to or any audio uh, statements that you may have made uh, yes I heard a recording that was recorded when those people returned to uh, to ask me some questions. And uh, did that recording at, uh, properly reflect the uh, statement that you made on that day? Yes, it was me, and it was the full discourse that we had. Permission to approach the state's exhibit number 33. Yes, ma'am. Or just as I'm noticing that that clock is in an interesting location. Just a point of note. 
I, I just saw that. I looked up and it's all sit down now. Let your owner take over. It's uh, it's five o'clock, and that's what time uh, we close down the court session. Um, and so I'm going to ask if you would be back at nine. Does that create a difficult situation for you? Uh, it does create a bit of a difficult situation. I'd prefer if we could just proceed for five or ten more minutes and finish this. Just pause for a second. Please. <laughs> uh, the court in its discretion is going to go forward for just a few more minutes if, um, unless somebody has a sort of an emergent situation. It's usually daycare that, that is the one that's the kick in the key uh, with a penalty associated with it if you're more second late. Um, I've got to balance what your situation is with the jurors as well. Any jurors that have a, uh, a situation that would cause us to, that 10 extra minutes, I'm, I'm, I'm just supposing here 10 minutes. If you've got that, just raise your hand because your, your uh, input is also important. All right, with no hands raised, uh, let's, let's go forward then. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, um, the area of Stadium Drive that you located the phone, um, is, can you narrow down, because Stadium Drive is a pretty long road, can you narrow down the area that you found it? Yeah, yeah it's, it's easy to narrow that down because um, when I stopped to pick up the phone, um, I made note that across the way from me there was a utility service substation of some sort, that there was a, a maintenance guy sitting in his truck like... Uh, maybe having lunch or something, and I supposed that he was wondering what this weirdo was doing, stopping his bike ride, picking up trash on the side of the road. Okay. And do you recall a cross street that that was near? No, I mean, this is the point between Carver and where it crosses. Uh, I believe that's broad up there. So it's the large looping section of stadium as you come between Carver. I think it's broad. Okay. Thank you. Permission to approach your Yes, ma'am. I'm going to show you what's been marked with states, exhibit number 33. And ask you if you recognize this, sir. Yes, I recognize that as the uh, recording taken uh, on that afternoon when I believe it was three other officers came in had some questions for me, and I've signed it here that I've listened to that. Okay, and uh, how do you know that that's your signature? Oh, uh, because I, I did it. I... Thank you, Ron. At this time, I'd like to introduce State's Exhibit number 33 into evidence. Uh, I, I object. He's testified uh, to his memory. His memory is refreshed. I have not challenged that, and I object to admission of that. Thank you. The objection is on uh, overruled for him. Thank you, Your Honor. Permission to call the sir. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
where he found it. I mean, do you think that's Can I see counsel up here for just a minute? 